This is how you spell fish. Why? This is In The Loop. I'm Christian Bryant. This week is finals week for the Scripps National Spelling Bee, a competition that celebrates words and a bunch of kids showing off their superior intellect to us adults. Personally, I don't remember the day in elementary school where we learned how to spell pendulok. Yeah, that's a word and these kids can spell it. I cannot. Now, when I hear spelling bee, I think of Billy Madison. C-O-U-C-H. Correct. I am the smartest man alive! We could not escape Adam Sandler in the 90s. So the spellers taking the stage for the National Spelling Bee will have much harder words. This week, as many as 12 kids will jump on a stage and have a spell off until there's only one left standing. And this spelling bee has one especially important goal. Don't let these finals end like the last go round in 2019. That's when eight spellers split the championship after judges literally ran out of words. They will forever be remembered as the elite eight. The eight spellers that for three and a half hours took the best punch the dictionary had to throw at them. I'm telling y'all, the competition is tough, but to make sure that doesn't happen again, there will be a lightning round if necessary. Here's how that'll work. If there are still multiple spellers left standing by the final round, they'll be given 90 seconds to spell out as many words as possible from a prepared list. Whoever spells the most words correctly wins. I am already filled with anxiety. The bee has been around since 1925. Back then, nine newspapers got together to sponsor the first event. The winner was an 11-year-old from Kentucky who spelled the word gladiolus right. In an extremely slumdog millionaire turn of events, the kid knew the word because he had raised the flower back home. He won $500 worth of gold pieces as an award. ESPN wasn't around then and neither were TVs, so the spelling bee wasn't exactly the nationwide spectacle it's now become. This year's bee is special for one big reason in particular. It's following up a historically rare gap year. The bee has only been canceled during World War II from 1943 to 45, and then in 2020 because of, well, you know, the pandemic. After a year off, the tension is exorbitant. Not a word I would usually use, but I'm in the spelling bee spirit. One question I've had in mind, how do these kids even study for the bee? One of our sister stations talked to a finalist from Arizona to learn more about the techniques. Turns out for many kids, it has a lot to do with the origin of the word and less with memorizing the dictionary. If, if I heard a word and you used kind of um, an it sound, um, symposium, well, if, I, since I know that's a, uh, if I've been told that it's a Greek word, I'm probably going to use a Y in the I sound because that's a very common um, way Y is used in Greek. But in Latin, it's very rarely used. Ha. Huh. I always thought kids were just buying time by asking for the origin. Turns out it's more than a stalling tactic. So the Scripps National Spelling Bee has a lot of history behind it, but plenty has changed in just the last couple of decades. New, more challenging rounds have been added as students have become better and better spellers. But one element that has stayed the same since 2003 is the Bee's official pronouncer, Jacques Bailey. He's the guy who reads each word in the competition and announces a winner each year. You might call him the Bee Master. Karthik Namani, if you spell this next word correctly, we will declare you the 2018 Scripps National Spelling Bee champion. He also records word pronunciations that students use to practice. So by the time kids are up on the stage, his voice sounds pretty familiar. As an eighth grader, Bailey won the spelling bee himself after the runner up misspelled glitch. I guess personal computers and the spinning wheel of death that came with them weren't common knowledge in 1980. Bailey is also a classics associate professor and director of graduate studies at the University of Vermont, where he studies philology or the meanings of words and how they've evolved. 
Last year, we met the bee master on campus to ask him a few questions, including why almost all spelling bees use English words only. Basically because in every other language I know of, if they have an alphabet, the words are spelled the way they sound. If you know Spanish, you don't really misspell words in Spanish. If you know German, you don't misspell words in German. The English expanded all over the globe and they started just sucking in words from all over. It's what we call a hypertrophied language. It's got multiple systems and nobody has really tried to control it. This is how you spell fish. Why? Well, because you want to spell the f sound with a standard way to spell the f sound, and that's in rough and tough. And you want to spell the i sound in a standard way to spell i in a common word, women, i. Now, we want to spell the sh sound with another common way to spell sh, and that's nation or ratio. So this is how we should spell fish, according to George Bernard Shaw. There's a lot of memorization. One way to know things is actually to know them. But another way to know them is to be able to figure them out. Koinonia, K-O-I-N-O-N-I-A, koinonia. That is correct. Each language has its own system. And then you realize, oh, but when we borrowed those words into English, the English didn't always follow those systems. The studying for the spelling bee for the winners is much more intense than it's ever been. And they put such industry into it that it's very, very difficult to find words that they will miss. Honestly, I don't think that in high school you should be, but I think at grade school, it's that perfect moment. You discover a whole new group of what you call sight words, words that you need to know to know. They're the words that are going to unlock all the phenomena of literature. These are the words, they're doors that you can open for yourself onto the enterprise of human knowledge. And then later on, you start to use these concepts and you realize maybe the most important thing about a word is not how you spell it, it's what it means and how you use it. But first you have to know that the word exists. So the basic reason I love words is because they express ideas and because they're a fantastic technology. The memory of the human race is extended as far back as we can find things written down. Language is the tool with which you share and tell other people about anything. There's no other way to do it. I think it's also German like Fragen. That would work. Frankly, I think of myself as a permanent student. I'm in basically about 48th grade right now. Of all the things we call human rights, one of them should be education because it's what allows us to develop into what we want to become. Tonight we're on the ground in Orlando, Florida, where the B finals are playing out. Not just because Scripps, our parent company, is the company hosting the show, but hey, I'm sure that didn't hurt our press pass application. Newsy's Casey Mendoza shows us how the pandemic has changed this annual celebration of words. We're here in Orlando, Florida for the televised return of the Scripps National Spelling Bee. 11 kids are competing against each other and the dictionary to win the very first bee held since 2019. I've been a competitive speller since third grade. So I started competing in spelling bees when I was in second grade. If I had gotten my root bakeries right, I would have made it to the semifinals on my first try, but I didn't. And uh, so, I, uh, so I've been studying basically ever since. Last year's spelling bee was canceled because of the pandemic, marking the first cancellation of the event since World War II. You know, teachers have had to adjust, families have had to adjust, educational systems, and likewise, the bees adjusted in the past year too, moving to a virtual competition from up until the fi actual finals. This year, it's a much smaller bee with only 11 kids competing in the final round at the ESPN Wide World of Sports, the same place the NBA bubble was held. I feel like I'm like in a surreal dream like this whole time I've been here. The original 209 national finalists competed virtually throughout June. So past year's Bee Week events, audiences, and crowds are giving way to a smaller competition. There's a, like, a lot of work that uh, I've put into this, so I'm, I'm really excited to be here. I'm really grateful for the opportunity to showcase my talents and my hard work that I've done so far. This year's finale, a culmination of a year's worth of practices and local competitions, will take place this Thursday, July 8th. 
Joining us right now is Casey Mendoza. I understand we're doing something a little different today. Today, in honor of the Scripps National Spelling Bee, we're going to play Spell This, which is like a little <laughs> mini bee just for the show. Well, I, I am happy to play. I also came prepared uh, with my very own name tag, just like the spellers. Um, <laughs> you know, don't ask me what I paid to, to get this made or uh, how rough a time I had at UPS, but um, we are ready to go. Do, do you have any rules you need to lay out for me? Yes. Uh, so we're going to start with like three words which have been used either from this year's competition or were the winning words from past years. And after that, we're going to play a new game for the Scripps National Spelling Bee, which is a word meaning where it's going to be a little multiple choice. I give you a word, I give you a sentence, and you're going to guess uh, the word meaning based off of the choices. I feel like I'm getting ready to be embarrassed, um, but <laughs> but I, I, I'm okay with it. I feel like this is helping me empathize with those um, youngins even more. Well, the first word was used from this year's competition and the word is mot mot. Uh, mot mot is a tree dwelling tropical American bird with colorful plumage. Let's go with N-A-U-T. N A U T. That is not well, correct. <laughs> I, I didn't think I'd get very far in this game anyway, but it's good to know that I've been eliminated after just one word. But I, I, I'm as ready as I can be for our second word. Perfect. Part. Well, the second word may be easier. It is squibbery. The okay. utterance or composition of squibs, which means a short piece of satirical writing. Squibbery. S Q. U, I, B, B, E, R, Y. Squibbery. Correct. Oh, there we go. Dab. Isn't that what the kids do after they score one? Dab. All right. Well, hopefully with the next round, that feeling of victory might continue, or it might not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this round was added just for the new, um, just for this new spelling bee, because last year, eight kids won. Uh, so they added a new, possibly challenging round um, to make the spelling bee a little bit harder. You're gonna finish the sentence based off of a multiple choice and based off of a word in the sentence. So are you ready? As ready as I'm gonna be. So the first sentence is, what is one most likely to do with a picadillo? Do you throw it, play with it, or eat it? Uh, it sounds delicious, so let's say eat it. You eat a picadillo. You are correct. Oh, nice. This sounds absolutely delicious. I'm on fire right now. Throw me the second sentence because I'm ready. The next one is fun. If you engage in petty foggery, you are designing clothes, eating fancy food, or quibbling over insignificant details. Um, quibbling over insignificant details? That is correct! So you stole my idea, took it to council, and claimed it as your own. Alexis, now is not the time for petty fogging. <gasps> oh, oh, we gotta have an adult version of the spelling bee. We, <laughs> we absolutely must. Casey, thank you so much for playing Spell This with me. We hope we're able to do this again sometime. Thank you for having me. And with that, I'm retiring from any and all spelling competitions decades after my eligibility was up.